Listen, controller gaming will never be the same after what I show you in today's video. This is not overhype or exaggeration. This is just pure excitement from a lifelong controller player who has been waiting for this because this is not just quality of life. This is pure competitive advantage. And I, I'm just thrilled, right? Because we're all looking for a competitive advantage, whether I go years back, right? I would try to get the control freak so I could refine my aim. I would get the silicone grip so that way my hands weren't sliding around. I would play even with double claw so that way I wouldn't miss out on a moment of gameplay. Well, I ended up investing in my gameplay and I got myself a scuff. It has the paddles on the back of the controller so that way you could you know remap your face buttons like jumping and crouching to the paddles so that way you're always aiming always moving well custom controllers they've been expensive for a long time and frankly there hasn't been a whole lot of innovation and even more frankly scuffs they had some early reliability issues right whether it was stick drift or the paddles were a little bit flexible a lot of people had issues with their early scuffs well they ended up getting a merger with Corsair, a PC peripheral company well known for extreme quality control, and they ended up dropping what is the Reflex, the PlayStation 5 Reflex. It's been my weapon of choice. It's got the mouse click triggers for the rapid fire shots. It's got really stable paddles, USB-C with a crazy low input delay. It's been my main controller. But there has been one thing, it doesn't matter, Battle Beaver, Scuff, whatever it may be, Xbox Series Elite, there has been one thing holding back controller players for so long until now. introducing the scuff envision controller and you saw a few features there in that teaser but it doesn't even begin to tap on what is the true game changer about this controller now who the heck am i to be telling you about a controller well if you don't know my name is isaac or iceman isaac i'm an ex air force pilot turned full-time video game creator who's done everything from game guides and gameplay on overwatch to blackout to fortnite to warzone and i've even competed both online and in person in warzone tournaments and done pretty well for myself but perhaps most importantly for today I've done a lot of tech stuff. I am a tech geek at heart who's reviewed everything from cameras to controllers to my entire PC setup and integrity first. No matter what, I want to make sure when you guys are spending your hard earned money, you're not getting screwed. Okay. I've reviewed scuff controllers in the past and I have torn them apart for issues both on stream and on YouTube videos, nitpicking every little thing I can. And they still signed me. I'm frankly, full disclosure, I am sponsored by scuff but they respect my honesty, they respect my integrity, and they respect my passion for all things gaming. So expect the brutal, honest truth from me here today. Now, I'm not just reviewing this because they sent me a box, you know, a couple days ago, and I'm gonna gas it up like it's amazing. If you've been a longtime follower of the channel, you probably noticed I've been covering my hand cam for about the past four months. And that's because I am the only person on the planet Legitimately, no other creators have been using this as their daily driver for the past four months. I've been putting in 15 hour sessions. I've been competing in tournaments and I know this controller inside and out better than anyone on the planet, including probably the people at Scuff. And I'm gonna give you a full breakdown about what I love, what I don't like, and what you should consider before buying this controller. Now, full disclosure, if you do end up going forward with your purchase decision, you can use code Isaac for a discount. But once again, if this is not the right controller for you, I will let you know. So how are we going to break down this video? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to go over real quick all of the essentials of this controller. Then the most important part, I am going to cover what makes this a competitive advantage, a true game changer. And then most importantly, I'm going to talk about any concerns and any considerations that you should have heading into a purchase decision for the new Scuff Envision. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. So this is your first look at the Scuff Envision controller. And at first glance, it looks like a lot of other controllers, but then you start to notice a few things special about it. Let's go ahead and start with the basics. It has a double centered thumbstick design, which is what I personally prefer. As a D-pad off to the side, controller buttons off to the side, pretty standard stuff, a start button and an options button. It has a power button here because this can be operated wirelessly. And it also has a profile switcher here. So if you ever have any mappings on this, you can switch up profiles for different games, or maybe you have a family member who uses a different profile. It all works just through that. But 
what are these buttons down on the bottom now as you can see from the graphic here they are rgb addressable i don't currently have the controller plugged in but fortunately this controller does work wirelessly as we mentioned earlier and you can see they light up plenty bright from back here but what the heck are you going to use these for you ever been in the middle of a game and you wanted to mute the game or maybe mute proximity chat because it was getting a little toxic or maybe you wanted to pause your music or maybe you're a streamer and you want to switch a scene or mute on discord everything can be done through the g keys we'll talk more about the software that allows that to happen as we rotate the controller to the side you will see the side buttons are back all of my og vantage 2 friends the side action buttons are back so if you want to ping someone while you're shooting them you can do that if you want to use it for a push to talk those are also custom addressable as well the triggers have been completely redesigned check this out so right now they are set to instant triggers where they feel like mouse clicks extremely rapid fire well let's say i want to use this and go play a racing game i want to go play some forza or something well check this out now they are fully articulating triggers this controller can be used for story mode rpg and then instantly oh be swapped back over just with your fingernail over to fps mode and boom rapid fire is back as you can see there, that is the option to switch from a USB to a wireless mode. I personally like the game always with wired for the lowest input delay. As you can see here, this has the strongest paddles, in my opinion, ever made out of a scuff controller. Okay, this is taking design inspiration from the Instinct. I kind of alluded to it earlier. The Instinct is the next-gen Xbox controller. I have been using the U-Reflex, and it has the same wicked strong like you cannot break these paddles no no matter how hard you squeeze them because of how they're built whereas the reflex i love it but even the reflex you can bend those paddles in the opposite direction if you want and maybe squeeze them and pull them side to side the envision they're not going anywhere rock solid on top of that you have a usb-c port embedded in there rock solid you're never going to have to worry about that port coming loose in the middle this is a strong feeling controller in the hand. And to kick it off, right below there, you can see it also has a port for a microphone. And you can also, as you'd expect, mute that microphone using those G keys. On top of that, you can also remove this faceplate if you want to change up designs, whether you're just feeling a little different that day, or maybe you share it with a family member. You can change up designs by simply lifting off the magnetic faceplate. That also makes it nice if you ever want to replace your thumbsticks. If you want a fresh, tackier feeling thumbstick, or if you want to change from concave to domed, you can do that all as well. Inside, they do have rumble packs, but it is a very lightweight feeling controller. A lot of like the OG PS5, Xbox controllers, when they have the rumble packs in, it feels really heavy. It doesn't feel heavy with rumble packs in, and you can turn off the rumble using the integrated IQ software. Now, the Envision comes in two separate models. We've been taking a look at the Scuf Envision Pro. It comes in both steel gray, and it also comes in this white. Now, eventually, Scuf will come out with what we know and love, which is the customizable custom controllers where you can choose every individual color from your thumbsticks to the rings to the buttons to the triggers, and we'll even come out with creator designs, and you can see the render for mine here. But due to supply chain issues, they want to get the controller out in time for MW3, for Warzone, for holiday gaming. They're estimating it'll be just a couple weeks away, maybe a few weeks away for these designs, but I would go ahead and err on the side of caution and pick these up in time for MW3 because for reasons we're going to talk about here in a moment, it legitimately changes the way the game feels. Now, they also have a base model. That base model will only be available in black, and there are three key changes. First off, it is only wired. There is no wireless option for the Envision base model. Two, you will not have the grip that you see on the back of the controller here and that rubberized grip does really help out with gripping onto the controller and then three it does not have the instant triggers where you can get those rapid fast mouse clicks it's going to be the regular triggers where it's just going to be fully articulating so for me that would be a deal breaker but for most of you the deal breaker is going to be the price how much is this state-of-the-art groundbreaking controller going to be well it's going to shock you and in a good way, because the Scuf Envision Pro, the top of the line, what I consider to be the groundbreaking model, starts at $179. I know that's a lot, but we'll set perspective here in a second. The base model of the Scuf Envision, $129. And yes, that is a lot of money, but 
anyone who's looked into custom controllers knows that the benefit of the ergonomics and the quality of life and the features you are truly investing in your gameplay and you play better because of it but if you compare it to a battle beaver in order to get digital triggers on a battle beaver with digital buttons on the back remappable guess what you're gonna pay a whopping 273 dollars on their site even for a scuff reflex the ps5 version 249 dollars for the digital triggers and the remappable paddles even someone like xbox who has the benefit they don't have to pay the licensing to sony for the reflex fps they have their own in-house controller 179 dollars so scuff with their controller with the g keys with the side action buttons with the remappable paddles and the feature that i'm about to talk about that blows it all out of the water matches line on line with the xbox and i think that's pretty dang impressive we'll talk about the warranty towards the end of the video which may also help your buying decision also you can use code isaac once again for a discount which can shave a little bit off of that but we'll talk about that more towards the end but i went ahead and asked scuff like how they were able to make this controller so much cheaper than their counterparts and it's because whenever they make something like the PS5 controller, they have to pay for the motherboard inside of the controller, and they also have to pay licensing to Sony in order to do it. Exact same thing for their Xbox controllers. And so now that they have their own proprietary design for PC, they save out on all that money, and they pass the savings back to the consumer, which I think is pretty freaking cool. But is any of this going to be worth it? Isaac, you've been gassing something up for a while. Why don't you just freaking get to it? Let's go ahead and get into part two of this video. What makes this controller so groundbreaking? And more importantly, what is that dang competitive advantage? Let's check it out. So we're here inside the Corsair IQ software. And as you can see, when we plug in the Envision Pro, it shows up and we have a lot of different things we can do here. As you see, we can adjust the lighting effects for the controller. It can be solid. It can be static. It can be rainbow, whatever you want. For the triggers, you can adjust your dead zone for the triggers and you have a constant live feed of both Here's what it look like, looks like with the standard slow trigger, but then we go over to the digital side and then look at what it looks like. Instant, right? So now you can actually see how it reflects inside of the software. But let's say you can change your trigger response curve, you can change your dead zones. All of that is available here in the software. Exact same thing is gonna be done over on the thumbstick side. If you ever need to change your thumbsticks, you can change the dead zone here. And let's say a game doesn't have a dynamic response curve like Warzone you can change to a dynamic response curve here. Now, I would keep everything linear and I would keep all your dead zones to zero and then change those in game. But in the event that you do need to change it for a game that does not have these settings, this is where I would do it. By default, just keep the default, keep the linear, keep your dead zones low and then change it in your game if your game supports it. Like I mentioned earlier, you can also turn your vibration all the way down, which is what I personally do. You can update your firmware here and your brightness, etc. But this is where it all changes. So we know a standard scuff controller can do things like, hmm, I want to take this paddle. I'm going to take this paddle and I'm going to say, I want it to be ABXY. I want it to be one of the face buttons. And I'm going to change this paddle right here to A. So now whenever I press P1 or paddle one, it works like A. So I go over here into Warzone, and as you can see, now whenever I press paddle one, I jump like I'm jumping in Warzone. But this is, let's be honest, pretty straightforward. We're already well familiar with a scuff's ability to do this. And it's all pretty point and click, right? So if I want to add something to the left side button, I can just click on it and say, I want to change this to a trigger. So that way, whenever I click that side button, it does the same thing as a left trigger. Maybe I don't want to reach all the way up to the left. I can just use the side trigger to do that. That's all what and that, that that's that's nice. That's nice and all. But this is where it gets crazy. Oh my goodness. Look at all the things that I have bound. Okay. We're gonna start with quality of life and then we're gonna get into the competitive stuff that I was talking about earlier. Okay. So we have some cool things here where I have it set to where I can auto run in game. And you might be like, Isaac, controller doesn't have the ability to auto run. That's a mouse and keyboard thing. But the way that most modern games work is it takes simultaneous inputs. You can't simultaneously aim and simultaneously use your right stick, but you can use keyboard keybinds while aiming with controller. Okay, and I'm going to show you exactly how that works for a competitive advantage here in a moment. So I've got the auto run. Let's say I'm talking to chat. I just press the auto run. I don't even have to touch my controller anymore and I'm running across the map. Okay, what if the game is really loud? I'm dropping in. It's obnoxious. I can just press a single button and it mutes audio, never having to take my hand off the controller. 
people start saying some wild stuff, I can mute the voice chat. Maybe I'm listening to music. I'm vibing out. I got a next song button, and I also have a play and stop music button. There are all these different combinations that you can change, and it's all available through here. You can bind to any button on your controller. You can bind to any button on your keyboard. And as you can hear, you, you might hear a little bit of something in the background right now, and you might be wondering what exactly that is. Well, that's me dropping into the game, and I'm like, man, this guy's getting really annoying. I don't, I don't want to listen to this. So... We load up Warzone, I hear someone in my prox chat, and then guess what? As you can see down on my hand cam, you can't hear the game. Now, all of a sudden, you can hear the game again. Game's too loud? Pause it. If people start saying some wild stuff, I just press this side button. You are now disconnected. I want to get back in, press it one time, boom, I'm right back in. But for me, this is really useful because whenever I play Warzone, this moment Your right here. Done. Now you deploy to the war zone. Now you deploy to the war zone. Every day I play this game and now I don't have to listen to it anymore. Okay. And now where things really begin to change is where I start to talk about the competitive advantage. Okay. The biggest problem with a controller, this is what it all comes down to is you are limited with a standard controller with the number of inputs. It is directly like your input is restricted to X circle, triangle, square, R3, L3, up, left, down, right, R2, L1, R2, L1. That's it. You can use paddles to remap to those, but you can't create new buttons. So what ends up happening is we have to share inputs and it, and it makes for clunky designs where instead of having a button where I played up, I have a button where I, if, I, if I press Y, I switch my gun. If I hold Y, I'll play it up. Or it's the exact same thing in Apex. If you're an Apex player, instead of switching your weapon, if you hold it, you'll pull out your knife and you can run a little bit faster. But where it really matters is movement, especially with MW3 and heading into the MW3 Warzone 3 or whatever they're going to call it, integration, where things get really, really bad is the circle key. Because the circle key is in control of crouch. It's in control of standing up. It's in control of proning. It's in control of sliding and it's in control of diving. So what ends up happening is you end up in this position where you find yourself doing dead slides, where you meant to slide, but instead you crouch, where you meant to dolphin dive, but instead you slide. Well, the beautiful thing with the scuff and vision is we can map every single one of those to a specific paddle. You will never dead slide again. You will be able to slide cancel faster than any of your peers because the way that sliding works in this game, the movement, it's not its not like MW 2019 where we had a tap to slide. And that's why slide canceling felt so smooth. Because they added the dolphin diving mechanic, the game is waiting to see not when we tap the slide, it's waiting to see when we tap and release. Because we need to see if we're going to hold because then we dolphin dive, right? So it's not tap to slide, it's tap release to slide which often results in us, you know, uh, you know, crouching when we mean to dive and, and etc. But what we can do to solve all of that, because we're going to need to solve this as we head into MW3, slide canceling's back. We're going to need to be sliding and then jumping quickly. And there's this weird sluggish delay. We can solve it by going into our keyboard and mouse keybinds. We're going to select specific keybinds for prone, specific keybinds for crouch, you can go into move in advance and set specific key binds to slide and dive. And that's what I have my paddle set to. And so check this out. I'm sprinting and I will never dead slide again. I'm literally just holding my slide key. And notice I don't crouch. I don't dolphin dive. I am perfectly sliding. This is, this is unreal. And just imagine how this is going to feel on MW3. Same thing. I have a paddle dedicated to dolphin diving. I don't have to hold the dolphin dive. I have a specific paddle where guess what? I tap it and every single time I perfectly dolphin dive, which means that when I'm on places like up here and I want to dolphin dive quickly so I can pull my parachute every single time, just like a mouse and key player, I'm going to be able to jump off high grounds and pull my parachute perfectly every single time. 
This can cross apply to Fortnite games. This can cross apply to Apex, whatever it is. Now you are able to set a specific keybind. Here's another alternative, right? So whenever you're playing Warzone, you're often stuck pulling your left finger over the top so you can ping an enemy, right? Well, guess what? I have ping instead of remapping to the front, I have it set to one of my side triggers. So now every time that I start shooting, this isn't a macro. This is an ergonomic thing because let me be clear. I don't support, once again, nice little quality of life there. I don't support any sort of aim assist scripts or aim assist buff or recoil scripts or macroing. There, there are things that you are doing in game with some of these other scummy controller companies that will breach TOS. And there's probably some things you can figure out with the software that would breach TOS as well, but that's not the purpose of the scuff in Vision. It is allowing you to gain additional mappable keys to where you can move and play the game as it is meant to be played, but not using any sort of external things like, you know, aim assist buffs, wall hacks, aim hacks, right? That is all illegitimate assistance to your game. This allows the game as it's meant to be played without any of the awkward binds of, of combining and holding or multiple pressing, it solves everything so whether it's a nice quality of life feature like me pressing my auto run setting down my controller and not moving or the game's a little loud and i want to go ahead and mute it or better movement because of things like specific movement to key bindings available only because of the envisions software this changes the game in fact if you guys remember a couple months ago there was a bug where place it were only Keyboard and mouse players could instant prone. I'll show a clip of what it looked like in the background. It is like legitimately hitting the floor and it wasn't possible because it required you having a specific key bound to prone. So controller players were at a severe disadvantage when they were fighting a mouse and key player who literally teleported to the ground. Well, guess what? With the Envision, I was able to replicate that by binding a specific key to prone and I could do the instant drop shot on controller that mouse and keyboard players were abusing. Now, eventually this got patched because it wasn't the intention of the game, which is how things should be. I'm glad it got patched, but it's nice to know that any of the advantages that mouse and key have because of the ergonomics of their large keyboard, I now have access to this because Call of Duty at the end of the day is a controller game and this solves the issues that controllers have had for years. Now, don't get me started on uh, aim assist versus mouse and keyboard. That is a totally different conversation. Call of Duty aim assist is insane. I'm a hybrid player, but at the end of the day, I know I am playing a controller game. Just don't even go down that rabbit hole in the comments. But one other thing I want to mention is that the input delay, the input latency, a lot of times when you're playing, especially wireless or even wired in, you feel a delay between when you're acting and when that action actually happens on screen. It's gotten better from PS4. The reflex was really impressive. This blows them all out of the water. I'm sure there's going to be some independent testing done that compares it, but I've tested it against Battle Beavers, Scuffs, regular controllers, everything. The snappiest and most responsive controller I've ever used. And before we get on to part three, I, I hope I have displayed just like how flexible this can be and how much this is going to change your movement and your quality of life. Just the fact that you can legitimately bind to anything a b x y any of the d-pads any of the triggers any of the bumpers any of the thumbsticks you can mute your microphone uh keyboard you can also map it to your mouse you can map keystrokes like you know control a or control s or whatever it may be you can even have text to where you have a pre-made text set up where you can type a message haha ggs get slammed all by pressing one g key you can uh, manipulate your media, play pause music. You can launch apps. You can change your profile, but obviously we have the dedicated key for that. You even can set up a macro where you start and you go to uh, uh, the, the voice channel and then you type out, haha, GG's get slammed and then press enter all within a fraction of a second. And now fortunately for, for the macro command and I made them aware of this, I'm like, yo, this can, this can be manipulated. And they made it to where you can't, do keyboard macros so when i when i press record and i try to press right trigger it's not like you can set up a rapid fire trigger um or and you can't like manipulate any of your any of your keybind buttons but you can do some stuff where you can actually like manipulate like 
keyboard keybind. So like I said, there are ways that you could potentially abuse this software. I think most of it is just for allowing, you know, the, the, the game to be played as it's meant to be played. Call of Duty and Scuff are official partners, okay? This software is going to be very familiar. There's going to be pros in the CDL that are using this controller as their main controller. Just know, Ricochet, they ban people for macros. There have been people who have ban gotten banned for auto clickers. So don't try to do any funny business, okay? Perfectly fine remapping. People have been remapping stuff onto like foot pedals, like diving on foot pedals and proning on foot pedals. All that multiple input remapping has been going on in COD and Warzone for years. Don't try to get creative and you know the difference between ergonomics and outside assistance or in this case automated assistance don't play around you'll get banned well, let's go ahead and get into number three considerations before you go in for your purchase so first off this is an expensive controller 179 bucks 129 bucks it's still expensive okay, you do have a warranty with this controller it originally for their og og scuffs were only like two week money back guarantee and six months well once corsair got involved and they made a really reliable product with their reflex and with their instinct. And now with their envision, they said, hey, one month, no questions asked, money back guarantee. One year, any issues warranty wise, send it in, we'll get it fixed, send it back to you, no questions asked. So a one year warranty and a one month money back guarantee. Okay, the other con of this controller, it is PC only, which really sucks because that means all my console controller friends, you're still stuck trying to figure out slide and crouch and, and holding buttons to combine buttons. That's just a limitation of PlayStation. And it's also just a limitation of the game developer trying to have dynamic movement without being limited by the traditional controller, right? There's only so many buttons they can map it to. And if you don't have something like a PC or a keyboard, your hands are kind of tied. So. I know PC already has plenty of advantages when it comes to FOV. Well, now COD has FOV on console, but frame rate, this is just another reality where gaming continues to push harder in PC and consoles getting left a little bit behind on that front. So unfortunately, it is only a PC controller. Now, in terms of flaws of the controller, okay, let's go ahead and get into a couple. So for me, me personally, I would not recommend getting the white controller. As you can see, you might be able to see a little bit of fading. I only use this controller for, you know, a few months and I'm already starting to see a little bit of fading. Uh, the grip in the back, just from setting it down on my mouse pad, I think the gray controller, in my opinion, looks a lot better and I think it'll stay a lot cleaner until you end up getting custom designs, which will come in the future. Okay, on top of that, in terms of design flaws, I think all the buttons feel great. I think everything is super responsive and I'm really impressed with how this controller feels. I have used and abused it for hundreds of hours. I've only found two flaws, okay? The very first flaw actually kind of surprised me. There were moments where if I shook my controller or I was like in an intense moment, my, my trigger would start to fire without me wanting it to actually fire. It was like once every 20 minutes or something, the gun would start to shoot. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I tested to make sure it wasn't the digital triggers. I didn't have anything wrong with it. And then I, I flipped it over to the manual triggers to make sure everything felt fine. Everything felt fine. You know, it wasn't having any issues. And then I ended up going through the Envision software and I noticed the dead zone was set to like 0%. And as you can see, the controller is like wired. It's, it's, it's noticing it at the 0% mark. And so what would happen is it would just... I don't know if you can see it. I'll have my editor zoom in. You can just see a little bit of that, that white on both sides just kind of showing up. And so basically what you need to do is you just need to set the dead zone, which brings that black bar over. So it basically says like, you know, it won't read anything from like the zero to 1% or the zero to 8% or zero to 5%. So for some reason, the dead zone was set crazy low. And if I didn't know how to manipulate the software, then I may have thought something was wrong with the controller when frankly it was user error and I could just simply drag these around and I wouldn't have any issues. The exact same thing would happen if you had issues with stick drift, which once again, I haven't had any issues with stick drift on this controller or even the same PlayStation 5 Reflex what I've been using for the past year. Their latest gen scuffs, it's not an issue, but you can both adjust for stick drift inside of this software right here. You can see there is no movement happening. You would see the stick doing something like this if there was stick drift, and you can also adjust that in-game. 
gameplay that I was playing earlier, I had my stick drift set to like 0.02, and I have it set to 0% in the IQ software. No issues here whatsoever. The second issue that I have outside of that little one little trigger mess up, which was frankly just me screwing up with the dead zone settings, is on the controller itself. The only thing that I'm concerned about long term is on these super durable paddles, I just see some cracks. And that's obviously meant to be there. But I know dirty gamer hands, dirty gamer grimy hands. And I already noticed on my own controller, I'm like, hmm, I would see some like, I don't know if that was like dried skin or maybe a little oil or maybe a little leftover food. Just be careful because there are triggers behind there that activate, you know, the buttons for your paddles. I haven't had any issues with miss inputs or anything like that. I just wonder if something got back there, how easy would it be to clean? You would have to like sift a, 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 a Kleenex or a, a paper towel or maybe just blow it out. I, I don't know. And I don't really know how they could design around that. But what I will say is just take care of your stuff. Just know that there is a gap in there, as you can kind of see inside of the internal mechanics. Just beware that I can't think of an easy way to clean in behind those gaps. So just be careful with your controller because if you got grimy hands, grimy kids, they may end up screwing something up. But that's purely hypothetical. Like I said, I've torn scuff apart in previous reviews. I have I have not suggested for people to buy certain controllers. But dude, the, the track record from PS4 to next gen PS5, Xbox One to now this PC controller scuffs i got a lot of buddies in the community buddy like jay god who very much like myself hold a lot of pride in how our community respects our opinions i will burn bridges with brands before i burn bridges with my community and i wholeheartedly put my endorsement behind this product i am thrilled with the build quality and more importantly i'm thrilled with what it allows me to do with my game it gives me a competitive advantage, but an ethical competitive advantage where it is simply ergonomics and it is simply access to movement options. It is not outside assistance to my aim, to my information, etc. It is the dream controller. And I think a lot of other custom controller companies are going to be crapping their pants because they're going to be months behind the scuff and vision. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to check out a Scuff Envision for yourself, you can check out the link in the pinned comment and the description. You can use code Isaac for a discount at checkout. I wholeheartedly endorse this for my PC players. If you're on PlayStation, okay, PlayStation 5, check out the Reflex FPS. It has the digital triggers. It has four paddles on the back, a profile switcher. It's all remappable, crazy fast uh, input delay. And also for my Xbox players, check out the Instinct, okay? I think this is the best looking controller they have in the lineup to this day. Same super rigid paddles. You have digital triggers and then also has the exact same nice feature where boom, flip it over to the sides, fully articulating, boom, rapid fire triggers. But unfortunately, this is for the PC homies only. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know down below. If you have any comments, things you want to see, they still are in the development process. And more importantly, this is a software. A lot of what empowers this is software so they can change and add things moving forward. So who knows? We may have an update video in the coming weeks or months. Just know that the Iceman Isaac design is on the way. If you guys enjoyed this video, it was awfully thorough. This is definitely going to be a long video. I haven't edited it yet, but I, I put some hours into this. I've been working on it all day to make sure you guys got the information that you needed before making a very important and pricey purchase right so i hope i did right by you i hope you guys learned a lot from this and i hope you check it out because i genuinely think this will change your game go ahead and drop a like on this video if you appreciate the effort i put into it subscribe for even more warzone content and even the occasional tech review and if you still have more questions check me out live over on twitch because now i can finally use this on the hand cam without hiding behind an nda i'll catch you all in the next one peace